for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put some simple content onto your web pages. In the preceding video, we saw how to create a website and how to put some pages into that site. Now I'm going to go ahead and click and just hit enter and you're going to see it gives me space to type. And I can go ahead and type this is sample text. So all you have to do to enter text onto a page is simply to type it. Formatting your text on a web page is done with something called CSS. If you've worked with CSS before, if you've worked with styles before, this concept will be familiar to you. If not, we have a course on the basics of CSS at our website, createtheweb.com, that you can tape that will simply explain to you how to create styles and use them in Dreamweaver. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now I'm going to put an image into my file. So I'm going to go to the insert menu, and I'm going to go ahead and select image. This is going to allow me to go find the image that I placed on my computer. I'm going to go up one level here, and I have a folder I created here called Sample Media, and there are some images inside of that folder. Now, there are three basic image types that you can use on a web page, and they're GIF files, JPEG files, and PNG files. There are many differences between them. The main difference between them is the resolution. PNG files are the highest resolution and have the most features inside of them. GIF files, files that end in .gif, are probably the lowest resolution of all the files and have the fewest options. And JPEG files come somewhere in the middle, or files that end in .jpg. You may also occasionally see JPEG files end in .jpeg, and they're the same kind of a document. It's the same thing as you can end your web pages with .htm or with .html. The trade-off for this resolution, or the quality of the image, is that the image size will usually be larger in a PNG file than it is in a GIF file. And generally what I tell people to do is, if you've got a very simple image file, a piece of clip art, or perhaps um, you know just a little uh, image that you want to use on your uh, page. Usually GIF files will work for that very nicely. If you have something like a photograph or something that requires some detail, something that has uh, maybe high resolution to it, that's when you're going to want to use either a JPEG or a PNG file. If you're deciding between the difference between the two, PNG files allow for transparency, whereas JPEG files do not. But for right now, I just want to put a simple file onto my uh, document. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one, Kansas Map, here. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to tell me that this file is located outside of the root folder and may not be accessible when you publish the site. Your root folder is, and then it will tell you what you selected when you initially created the, the uh, site. And it's asking, would you like to copy this image, or this file, to this location now? Now, if you had set up a default images file for, or default images folder for this site, it would place it in that folder. But since we didn't do that, it's just going to place this at the root. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. I do want it to copy it over there. And there you can see I have the name. And we've got a couple problems with the name here. One is we've got uppercase letters, and the other we've got uh, a space in here. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this Kansas Map GIF. You always want to name your images something that makes sense for the image. That not only helps you, but it also helps search engines identify the topic, um, and uh, what your site is about. So I'm going to go ahead and name that and then I'm going to go ahead and click Save. 
The alternative text is a text description of your image. So I'm going to go ahead and type in map of the state of Kansas. And again, this helps with search engine optimization, and it also helps individuals with disabilities access the content on your website. Then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that image has now been saved in my website. You can see it there, kansasmap.gif. And it's also been placed on my page. Now, as far as positioning images goes, you're going to, again, do that with CSS. And if you go back to our website, createtheweb.com, and go to the section on CSS tutorials, you'll see um, quite a few videos on um, working with CSS and images. But if you wish to resize the image, all you have to do is point in the lower right hand corner and drag and you'll see that you can resize that image. And you'll see there it's actually been stretched and distorted. I'm going to go to the edit menu and select undo resize to restore those changes. If you hold down the control key when you're dragging, I'm sorry, the shift key when you're dragging, it will resize the image proportionally so you won't have to worry about the stretching effect. And again, we can't see that very well. So again, I'm going to go to Edit, Undo, Resize. So that's the simplest way to put text and images onto your website. Now, one final thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit the settings for this site. So that the next time we insert an image, it goes into a default folder instead of just the root folder right here. And that'll help us keep things more organized. To do that, I'm going to go back to the site menu and select Manage Sites. You're going to see all the sites that you're working with, all the sites that you've created are listed here. There's my test site, and I'm going to go ahead and click Edit. And that opens up that dialog box that you filled in when you initially created this site. I'm going to go ahead and click on Advanced Settings here. And you're going to see the very first option that it gives you is the default images folder. And that's blank. So again, any images are going to be saved in the root of the folder. I'm going to go ahead and click Browse for Folder here. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder by clicking on this button right here. And I'm just going to name this Images. And then double click on it to go inside of it. You need to make sure it says select and then the folder that you're working with. And then I click the select button in the lower right hand corner. And you'll see the path to that file right there. And then I'll go ahead and click save. And done. Now if I was to insert another image, let's see what happens. I'm going to go to the insert menu and select image brought me back to that same folder. There's an image of an apple there. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Again, it's going to ask me to put in some alternative text for search engines like Google or uh, for screen readers for the disabled. So I'm just going to go ahead and type Apple and then OK. And that time you're going to see that there was no question asked saying, do you want to save this image inside of your root folder? It just placed it right there. When I go over here to my images folder, however, you're going to see that that image was automatically placed inside of that folder. So Dreamweaver can help us stay organized. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this Kansas map image into the images folder. So I'll just go ahead and drag that up there, and you see I'm right on Images. You can sort of see how it's selected there, and I'll release. And you'll see that that image is placed inside of that folder. And Dreamweaver also updated the path to that graphic. I'm going to now go to File and Save, and we're done. For more great videos and learning tutorials, 
or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com.